Hello and welcome. This is a chat to the professional, the show that has been designed to extract the activities of professional individuals and corporate bodies. My name is Martin Subu and as usual, I'm glad to be with you. Today we shall be looking at good governance, uh, always a tradition, but we are going to be focusing on a state, a state that has christened their slogan on common transformation, of course, under the leadership of a particular governor. My guest will be introduced properly after the break, but I can assure you it's an interview you don't want to miss. Don't go anywhere, I'll be back. Like I mentioned to you in my opening, today we are going to be taking a look at one of the states, South South Nigeria. We are talking about Alpai Bomb. Of course, uh, we all know it's an oil rich state, but it's not so much about how rich a country, a community, or a state is. It's about how well the resources are being put to use to the benefit of the generality of the public. And today it is my pleasure to welcome to the show the Honorable Commissioner for Information, um, Anir Khan Kumana. You're welcome to the show. Yeah, thank you very much. I'm happy to be here. Now, the so much talked about on common transformation. Um, as an individual, I do appreciate the fact that one needs to come to a Bible to understand what it is about. But I would like you to throw more light on specific issues that stand out at Pipe as a model state, particularly in terms of infrastructure, education, and health. Yes, thank you very much. Um, I'd like to first congratulate you for putting up this very, very illuminating show where you discuss with professionals and highlight professional uh, activities and conduct within the industry and government. So this is a very good step. Thank you. And I'd like to also say here that Akwaibom State, where you are in now, is being managed by a professional, a professional lawyer, you know, who also worked in corporate Nigeria and rose to the highest level as a CEO of MS Telecommunications. Okay. And then before he came into the state to join politics and also brought on board other professionals, other lawyers, journalists, doctors, and all that who came in here to assist him in developing the state. Mm -hmm. And that's how we got to what you refer to, to now as a common transformation of a private state. Yes, talking about infrastructure, like you mentioned earlier, I, I, I want to say here, without sounding only provo uh, uh, immodest or only provocal, that a private state has witnessed what I would like to describe as an infrastructure renaissance a revolution of a sort that has changed the facets of the development of the state and brought forth an unprecedented type of uh, uh, movement that has completely turned around the entire environment or the scenery of the state, so to speak. I'm saying this because from road construction alone we have a record over 1,800 kilometers of roads completed, measuring more than 400 brand new roads. We have at least 32 bridges completed and commissioned. We have four flyovers finished, and then the fifth suspended, which one? Fifth one that we like to call the suspended bridge. Mm -hmm. Somewhere at the back is going on. We have a, a 1.2 kilometer bridge ongoing at Okonte, the Enumbo local government area of the state. That's the longest bridge in the state. Mm -hmm. And you, you, if you aggregate this, and then you look at the ultra modern uh, government house complex, turnkey infrastructure. Yeah. They come complete with the, government, the new governor's lodge, a, a banquet hall, new governor's office, a new deputy governor's lodge, and a, a new international press center mm -hmm. for the government house. Mm -hmm. So, all part of the infrastructure. If you look at the city of Uyo, you will see the changes, you will see the remodeling work going on, you will see beautiful overhead bridges, fountains, and so on, and beautiful lit streets well laid out with pavements in many places. I can take you all the way even up to the underground drainage program project of the state government. Mm -hmm. The first one was about 3.6 kilometers built under the earth, 40 meters under that drains storm water once it rains. 
from the Duro axis all the way to the ravine somewhere in Italy. That area is perfect. Right now we are working on a 4.7 kilometer line on the ground that engulfs all of the through the back of uh, uh, the communities in New York and goes through okay. Ubisibo to the back of the what we call the Tropicana Entertainment Center, which itself is another major infrastructure, but we do tourism. So okay. we'll talk about that later. So all of these are uh, come together to aggregate what we call the uncommon transformation. Yeah. It's been infrastructure like never before. Yeah. You can look at our e-library, which situates well in education, but it's one of the key infrastructure that we have here. I can go on and on and on. Yes, in terms of uh, tourism infrastructure, the administration of Governor Kwabio uh, invested heavily in, developer, in the development of the Tropicana uh, Entertainment Center, multifaceted entertainment center, I like to say. Mm -hmm. And I'm talking about a location where you have a cineplex with six cinema viewing centers. You have a shopping mall that is ready. The cineplex is ready. People are watching cinemas there of more than 3,000, 4,000 people daily. We have a 250-bedroom hotel sitting on 15 floors. That's what I'm going to furnish now. Mm -hmm. And then an upcoming convention center that can sit 7,000. You can see where we're going with all this. If you move leftwards within that complex towards the uh, the, the wet and dry park, you see what we would like to call a mini Disney, where you have the beautiful rides, you have all of the lazy river and all the playground for children and so on. So it's a one-stop center. It aggregates into the major infrastructure of the uh, government, but that situation within pluralism. If you come back to the education part, you can take a look at the ultra-modern e-library of the government of Okwabi, was built by this administration under His Excellency Chief Dr. Gosri Ogoro Okwabi. Mm -hmm. 350 computers in one roof. A dual library type where you have a conventional platform where you, that's the paper library of about 35,000 to 40,000 books already in. And then you have the digital arm um, with over 70 million e-resources and materials downloadable, including children area and so on. It's, uh, it's uh, that's moving the state towards a knowledge-based society, a knowledge-based economy, and a knowledge-based environment where people can do things seamlessly. Mm -hmm. That's all part of it. We can go on and on and on in terms of healthcare infrastructure. Or let's go to this complete education. Looking at education, you will see that the administration has tackled education more than anything else. In fact, it's one of the most enduring legacies of the Aquavio administration. I like to call it an Aquavio legacy. Yeah. Because this is one legacy that will live and I'll leave everyone. Education stays with one and you die with it. No one can take it away from you. You educate the populace so they can come and maintain the roads you're building. You educate the populace so they can come and add and build upon what you've done. That's what the government is required to do. So today, we have had to short school enrollment by, we've seen school enrollment rise by over 300 percent. By over 300 percent and it's still going up. More than 3,000 school blocks have been built and rehabilitated across the state, and we're still doing more. If you take a look at um, the uh, other educational infrastructure, uh, such as provisional, provision of laboratory equipment, mm -hmm. building of labs, and uh, specialized science equipment for schools, all of those have been tackled. Staff quarters, training and retraining of teachers. Yeah. They've all aggregated to raise the bar and the standard of education. That's why we call it free, compulsory, and qualitative. If you move to the healthcare sector, uh, it's been very, very, uh, the news has been interesting and very sweet there. Five new general hospitals built, a new international referral hospital, or what we like to call the 20th anniversary specialist hospital, is under construction and it will be completed this year with modular theaters, with uh, facilities for open heart surgery, cancer treatment, and all of those coming in. Does that's coming on. You need to take a look at it. It's a beautiful infrastructure that will guarantee sound and proper health care for the people of Okwabom State and other Nigerians who may choose to use that uh, facility, that is coming up. That is in addition to rehabilitation works done in various old hospitals like uh, the uh, old General Hospital at Ikorebena at Ikwitauro, at uh, Emmanuel Hospital Lekeb, and several others with health, health outposts or health centers. Over 150 of them rehabilitated. That should actually be the responsibility of local government. But that is not just about the cities. Governor Badu's development model is that he takes this development to the rural areas, out of the city capital, also to the local government areas. I'll give you an instance. We were talking about roads before now. In a place like Kekhe, 49 urban roads have been constructed by the Aguabi administration. In urban, 34 urban roads 
constructed by the administration, almost all of them completed except where you have outfall uh, out problems or design issues. You go to a place like Ikorogbere, uh, uh, you have more than 36 roads completed in a park, you have 19 urban roads completed. In Ikorogbere, about 18 urban roads completed. You go to the Tina Nazis, about 11.2 kilometers of urban roads completed. And then Barini, an area that is ongoing, they have uh, more than uh, more than 10 kilometers have been completed, and the, the detail for the, the various places. That tells you how it's working. You go to Kalibari, you see the beautiful park that we built there, which is just taking building another plaza, like we have one in here already. Okay. One has been put in Kalibari. There's another one that will come out of Africa. There's a new hotel, that's the third hotel now coming over the Kalibari. The fourth point by Charity, uh, which is being built by the Renaissance Group, and that's coming out. And the, third, uh, the, the fourth one will come up at Eket. That's how we spread uh, the development in the state. So it's been a very interesting era for us in the government of Okwaibom State because the governor of Okwaibom State has truly brought to bear what is referred to as a common transformation, and we're happy for it. Well, lovely. What more can I add? I mean, uh, looking at the cabinet of the governor, uh, Godswill and Clive one uh, cannot but in point one fact that he went for professionals all through. You know, listening to you and watching you talk about this project, it would look as if these were things that were done overnight. But to have a grasp of all these projects and then with all the details, the same way, you know, watching and listening to the governor speak, uh, you would pick these projects one after the other. You see, one thing is, 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 is one thing assembling uh, what I may call a group of core professionals to assist in the governance of either a state or a nation, but it's another for those set of professionals to be able to work perfectly well with the boss. Now, working with Governor Abadi, how would you describe it? There have been so many instances, so many other states where you have so many professionals, but of course their words or advice may not eventually count. So how does it work in Aquaibo to, to, to the extent that we are seeing this, this kind of uh, synergy and each, each of the commissioner you speak to or any member of the executive council you speak to is almost singing the same song. So what is it that is unique about your ESCO? Well, I'd like to first say that the starting point is the leader of the ESCO. Okay. That's the successor chief, Dr. Gosselin Obodakbali, COM. He has given direction and is providing good leadership okay. for the people. So you can only fall in or fall out. So we are, our approach here is teaming for success. But teaming for success, mm -hmm. it's a collective work. It, it's kind of participatory. It's a democracy itself. You have the political democracy which is working for the people. There's also internal democracy within the ESCO, which is bringing all democratic values and having people make their contributions was the development of the state, and that's why we're getting the results we're getting. Teaming for success, yeah. yes, as driven by the leader himself, who is also leading the team. That's all we are bringing the various parts together to ensure that we achieve success. For yeah. Nobuagyo, it's about results, not efforts. Okay. It's about getting answers, not efforts. Once you're not getting answers, then you're not talking <laughs> with them. I'm sorry. Effort amounts to nothing if there are, not, there are no results to show. For that's them. right. Anyway, uh, within the past 10 minutes or thereabout, you know, I uh, have been discussing with the Honorable Commissioner in charge of information in Akwaibom State, uh, South South Nigeria. And we've tried to take a look at the uncommon transformation of the administration of God's will at Babio. Uh, but at the moment, we must take a break. By the time we return, we shall be getting into specific issues, you know towards achieving good governance, which is what this show uh, seeks to promote. Don't go anywhere, we will be back in a short while. You welcome back. Uh, this is a chat to the professional. And if you are just tuning in, I have a guest here, one of the core professionals assisting in the management of one of the states, South South Nigeria. And we are talking about a Bon, a state known for what the current administration terms the uncommon transformation under the leadership of uh, Godswill Akpaibu. 
uh, who, of course, we all know is a seasoned professional. Of course, what this show seeks to achieve is to promote professionalism in all facets of our life. And by so doing, we encourage good governance. And here with me, uh, like I said, is the Honorable Commissioner in charge of information, uh, Anir Khan Umana. Uh, he's really uh, scored himself high in the first uh, couple of minutes. But now we shall be getting into specifics. Uh, I'm going to narrow this discussion down to your ministry, the information ministry. I've seen a couple of publications. I've seen uh, a number of uh, audiovisual productions, uh, both locally and internationally. And one is tempted to ask, are these productions manned by staffers of the ministry, or are they outsourced? I'd like to say to you that we do everything here ourselves. We're going to be very difficult uh, to control and be able to achieve the timelines that we're yeah. looking at if we are not controlling the process internally. Okay. I said to you, we produce documentaries every week. Okay. And it's not just about producing. I must personally read the script. I must yeah. personally preview whatever is going in there. And that is the kind of work that we get involved in here. So we have more than 230 30 minute videos on the internet. You can go on to uncommontransformation.tv and download whatever video you want there on our various weekly packages. Mm -hmm. And the way we do this with dedication, with commitment, it's very tasking, it's a tasking exercise to produce documentaries every week. You know what I'm talking about. It's a serious exercise. But we have to do this because we must showcase what we have. Especially in a state like ours, where as much as you're working, you also have politicians and some very few uh, minorities who want to discredit sure. what uh, the government is doing and disparage the person of the government. Mm -hmm. So we will not accept that. Mm -hmm. We decided to put this on so the globe. Everybody sees it. But more importantly, we have to do our work. But when we need to outsource, we also outsource. Okay. But you can't do everything in house. Sure. There's a lot of things, services that people are also providing. Mm -hmm. We have printers, we have suppliers doing yeah. different works and so on. There are also uh, television or uh, radio works that we also have to outsource. Yeah. If we have, if we look at the template that we have the time and we have the competent people to do those for us. We do those. But back to the ministry, I think uh, we have done our part, so we have done our best so far uh, to move the ministry forward. We have to change, turn around first the environment, the work environment, to make it a little more interesting and create some ambience yeah. that we have achieved. So we have at least functional offices and good environment to work in. It wasn't like this when the administration came on board. Yeah. In fact, when we came here, it was one uh, shackled place with some old dilapidated seats and all sort of things. And so we had to tackle that first, did some POPs, changed and tiled up the walls, uh, the floors, and repainted and did some work. We moved on and then got into core information services development area. We set up a 27 systems uh, media center down here. And then we have set up a new library for research. And we also went on and set up a, media, a, a citizen center where we get feedback from citizens on what is happening in different areas and different places. So we try to do all of those internally while not losing sight of our primary responsibility of enlightenment, of, of course, creating uh, uh, education, public awareness on government policies and programs, mm -hmm. but through publications, through radio and television, and of course sometimes town hall meetings. We've done okay. that, but in terms of core investment in our other arms, in the administration of His Excellency Governor Pabio invested in a new digital compliant transmitters for the AKBC radio. Right now it's invested in a brand new Ghost Community Press for the Pioneer newspaper, so they can go daily. The press has been installed, we're just waiting for finishing work. We've built a, we've done a purpose built television studio. Mm -hmm. Once we finish that, now it will become as good as what you signals you're getting from national TVs mm -hmm. and international mm -hmm. TVs. So we've seen all of those happen and a lot more that's happening. We've had to train our people, we should sharpen their skills. And you know, it's a lot more of a brain work, it's a lot more of intellectual work, yeah. it's a lot more of networking work than actually being on site, maybe on a project or so. The project is more of the brain project. And we're doing everything to service that. Okay, without wanting to sound political, you are the Commissioner for Information. And I would like to ask you, of course, perhaps you might be the best person to talk about it, the abandonment of the Oron Nation. What do you have to say about that, you know, briefly? 
Yes, I'd like to clear that impression completely. There is no such thing as abandonment. There's no part of our tribe of state that's abandoned. Okay. Talk less of being abandoned by this caring administration. Because you specifically mentioned our own nation, I will, may give you some snippets because you may not have time to listen to all. I can't understand those who are talking. I think that must be political talk because this is one local government that His Excellency started with 34 urban roads, which he awarded. Most of the roads were completed, except few that had some design issues and had outfall issues, no way to take water to, and so on. And if you get into some of those con construction, you may just be heading to nowhere, except some of those. Those were the ones that were, that, that were still reworking the designs. Okay. The same other nation you are talking about, most of the part of international airport lie within the, 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 the Okobo axis of our, our, our nation. Okay. Yes, you can, we can go on and on. I've talked about 34 of my roads. Look, in terms of interministerial project, government invested almost two billion in that in our nation alone. Creating interministerial projects in different local government areas, not less than 100 in each. And even went ahead and added additional 250 million each year to assist in the empowerment of the youth in that area. This was way back in 2009. And then by 2000 and, uh, that same 2009, the airport was completed. The line mostly in our own local government. A new road was built to create a bypass from the airport back into our own nation, apart from the 34 of our roads. And then you can look at, in terms of human capital development, capacity development, they've never had it so good since 1983. For the first time, two ministers have come out of our own nation from this government through the recommendation of His Excellency Governor Bwadi. Yeah, the former Minister of Science and Technology, uh, Professor Rewa, and the current Minister of Housing and Urban De Development, Mrs. Akuneyani, from our own nation. Two ambassadors have come out of our own nation through uh, the instrumentality of His Excellency. I was a career ambassador, and then Ambassador Uwe was appointed through his recommendation, mm -hmm. and he served as ambassador to, uh, to Greece and Cuba. This is in addition to uh, the Euro nation have been kept in the cabinet for a long time. They've run very, very sensitive and important ministries from the Minister of Local Government, Minister of Rural Development, Office of the Attorney General, and uh, Commissioner for Justice, mm -hmm. and so on. You can go on and on. There are a lot of young, other young men and women who have been empowered through special advisors and special assistance yeah. jobs. And so human empowerment is the biggest. Then beyond that, if you go to, it is within the other nation that the state government is working with the federal government towards the development of the deep sea port. All of the preliminary works have been done. So what, is we, what we're respecting now, and we must thank this president for approving uh, the develop, that development in that part. And what is left now, is having the, the, the final approval from the Federal Executive Council for FDIs to come in and a deep sea port will, go, will get up there. What will be the implication of that? There will be a new economy opening at, the Gulf, at that part of the Gulf of Guinea, which will create a major interface within the Gulf of Guinea. So I do not think it's, it's all about politics. I will come, we, we, don't don't have, politics. we don't have time, but uh, finally, I need you to uh, perhaps in a couple of months, you know, this administration will be winding down. What would be your advice to the younger ones? I mean, those of them watching out there who probably want to be like you in, in, in one second, or rather 30 seconds, what would be your advice to them? They should look up to, look at the, look up to God for his continued blessings upon Opaibum State. Look up to and continue to support His Excellency, the Governor of Opaibum State, Chief Dr. Gosselu Bodopaibum, and he, as he continues in pursu uh, the pursuit of the common transformation agenda that has changed this. The, the, breadth, the breadth and depth of this state they should, they should remain focused and committed and of course will be interested and also participate in the development of the state in whatever capacity they find themselves. Thank you very much, Honorable Commissioner. You must accept what we call the professional handshake. Thank you, thank you very much. Thank you very much. The young need, ones we need more professionals like coming on board. We need more people doing professional things, whether it's in private sector or public sector. We need to do things professionally. And thank I must you thank very you for much. this program. You're welcome. Thank you. So, viewers, uh, at this point, we must take another short break to wrap up the show. But um, that will be all for the interview segment. Don't go anywhere. I'll be back in a moment. Alright, guys, I'm afraid.
feel that's the much you can take on the show today, chat to the professional. You will agree with me that an air mana is indeed a core professional. Uh, someone who has made his mark both in the private and public sectors. But of course, he will be leaving a legacy that, uh, if you ask me, is worthy of emulation by whoever might be succeeding him as the next commissioner for information in a quiet home state. And of course, the young ones out there who are looking up to people like him, uh, you heard him, and I'm sure if you get to you, you will be more inspired by what he has done as the Honorable Commissioner for Information. So till next week when I come your way, keep watching the show as we keep encouraging professionalism in offices of our life, as we keep encouraging good governance in the entire continent of Africa. But till then, I remember Martin Sobu saying, stay blessed, and I'll see you again. Oh, oh, Professional, we'll make you know more about the society.